Hello, everyone. This is a group that's called Dialogue on Race Group. It's been going on for quite some time. It was going on uh, first at the Baha'i Center in Kansas City. And uh, as we struggled to, to try to make something happen, we just started the conversation about our own experiences on race because it was, it was developed uh, out of Michael Brown's murder. So we continued to have discussions and we recognized certain things need to happen. So there were a couple of spinoffs. And one of the spinoffs was drumming up the conversation. Another one was this one called uh, Dialogue on Race. And then the third one was Intellectual Preparation for Social Action. Some of you will see these uh, as we talk about the Bridge uh, Conference, and you may run across those. But this is a very spiritual, active group and loving group in the sense that we know what we want to say when we want to say it. And so I want to talk to, uh, I want to hand it over rather to Martha Rabani to talk about the early beginnings. Thank you for uh, the invitation to be with this group tonight. Um, you know, the dialogues on race, I joined when we moved from the Baha'i Center to the Zoom meetings. And it was an opportunity actually at that moment to extend the invitation to invite friends that were near and far. Really, I personally learned a lot from the time I spent uh, in this group, um, especially America after the reconstruction era, which was something I was not aware of. And then I was able then to educate my family my husband, my children. And um, it was an extremely powerful experience. And out of this also, we've been having uh, devotionals that are focused on uh, race unity. Um, I was uh, with the dialogue on race from its inception. And uh, I, I found it uh, necessary because a lot of my white associates and friends were, um, willing and wanting to talk about race and racism. They wanted to, they felt inclined or impelled to step up to the plate because of the conditions of the times. But I didn't feel like that they really had a conversation that could hold up under scrutiny, scrutiny from um, in, in a serious conversation because there were a lot of people that were uh, uh, white supremacist or white supremacist minded that could out talk them because they didn't know the subject matter. And I'm so blessed to see my allies that I have been associated with it grow in their capacity to discuss race on an intelligent level and uh, with anybody uh, almost on any venue. And that's due to the, uh, the background that Mr. Anderson uh, chose uh, by background, I mean the literature, the information, the movies, all of this information that gave them a great understanding about what racism was really like for African Americans in this country. I have to thank Martha for inviting me into this group because I live in Seattle. And when I lived in the Kansas City area where Martha lives, I was a very enthusiastic participant in her uh, salons. And that's how we, we became friends when someone recruited me to give a presentation for her salon. And I was just so impressed, I kept coming. And then of course, when I moved to Seattle, I thought, well, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss her. But, and then um, so delighted when she invited me to this group. Um, there are three things that have been very precious about it to me. Number one, as Mr. Moore said, the learning of more accurate, more complete, genuine history of race relations in this country, that has been invaluable. Number two, the people in the group are just absolutely wonderful and very, um, very, very smart, very thoughtful. 
very honest in their sharings and very emotionally generous. And number three, I have to back up a little and say, I grew up in the deep South. And I have to say with great honesty, until I participated in this group, I was afraid of black people. And I am so grateful to have that albatross off my neck. Wonderful, wonderful. That's so honest. Uh, that's what we need a lot more. And I appreciate that, Judy. I just, you know, following Judy, you know, I think I was the most clueless starting this uh, dialogue on race. I grew up in Maine where it's like a dish of milk. I mean, that's all you see is white people. In the 20s, when I was in my 20s, I had some associated association with black people. I found them very warm and, you know, funny. I, I thought they, were, they had a good sense of humor. But then <clears throat> I became a Baha'i and I knew idealistically what was supposed to be one, but I had no idea what the other part of my one was going to be like because I didn't have enough association and I didn't know enough of the real history and I didn't know enough of the ongoing pain and I really feel bad that I was so clueless but I'm glad that I'm on my road to understanding and I can't <clears throat> claim that I understand everything because how can I? How can I? I have never suffered that kind of pain. I have suffered, you know, certain kinds of pain, but not that much that people hate my whole race. I mean, somebody can hate my attitude or hate the way I look, but they hate my whole race. And for nothing other than just being a different color. Evening, friends, and I'm going to echo uh, some of the comments that have been made about um, how precious this group is, because it allows us to have um, dialogue from the perspective of not judging, not blaming, not shaming anyone for his or her lack of information. We're all on this journey and we arrive at various spaces. And I think in order for us to have what you have heard as um, comments that I think reflect great transparency and also trust, we had to come together in a space that was not only safe, but brave, because we have had some brave, courageous conversations and I think as a result of us being open and honest and trusting one another, that we won't go away and harbor any ill thoughts about one another. We have been able to delve deeply into how racism was actually engineered. And then there's a great emphasis and what do we do about this? So it's not only a, a talking and a reflecting, there's also a call to action. Thank you, my sister, Billy. Um, it was almost eight years ago where uh, the death of Michael Brown brought us together in St. Louis, which Billy facilitated many workshops in Kansas City. They were doing the, the same, developing their dialogue on race. And when almost two years ago, we went on to Zoom because of COVID, uh, I was invited to join and I have just so appreciated this group of Kansas City, now Seattle. That's the great thing about Zoom, you can be anywhere. Yes. But what I continue to learn is how precious we are, how lucky we are to be with our sisters and brothers of color. And so we, we start to recognize what we might be able to do to to clear ourselves up as individuals and recognize that we are dual nature people, we're spiritual beings, and that we have some things that we want to do. And we want to do them because in deep inside of us, we know it's the right thing to do. And keep in mind, 
African Americans learn too in these dialogues. Even though we were victims in many ways, we still learn, and we learn from you as an ally, what you felt and why you felt it. And you may have expressed some things that we just didn't know ourselves. Things. And so we've discussed so many different things. Uh, for example, double consciousness. We talked about uh, um, what that was like and how we have to use double consciousness just to make our way through the day. That this was not just random acts that, you know, the, what we have today in terms of the, the social order that we have uh, gradually built and shaped is not the outcome of random arbitrary acts of racism, that it was planned, that it was systematically planned. That was, that was uh, a unique uh, perspective that I gained, that, you know, it was very, <laughs> uh, I, I think that the sense is of, of anger and, and frustration, but also on the other hand, it comes with a lot of hope because you realize that people, uh, the generality of people, if they are not uh, intentionally trained to look at it this way, they are not naturally inclined to treat each other this way. You know, so it was in a way you you said you you feel the, the the size of the injustice is much bigger than you thought because it is systemic, it's structural, it's planned. But the, on the other hand, you realize that well. People were led and trained <laughs> there was, that it was not a, a natural inclination, that they did come together, blacks and whites, that they did want to work together, but that there were forces, powerful forces that worked on the opposite direction. And this group had been working so hard. We felt that it was time to do something. It was time to, to, to say, okay, we've talked about it. We understand it. Now, what can I do to make change, me as an individual? And that became a conversation, too. One, we have to take it upon ourselves, especially the white people, to take responsibility and initiative of, <clears throat> if you see something happening in a store that is prejudicial, to speak up. You know, this seeing a Kathy with her daughter, her interracial daughter, uh, as a mother of an interracial son, um, we don't really have an option to be quiet. We really have a daily responsibility and concern for our own children. And I think that is a gift that we've been given because there's no way I'm going to sleep because any child could be my child. So um, I, I think that's really an important point. There are a lot of, of interracial children in our culture today, and it's a great thing to help transform society, but we have to have parents that keep waking up. <laughs> it's a lifelong process, and I'm just so grateful to have a group to learn from and to get support from and learn to ask questions. Um, that's a real skill in building community. I, I want I want to say this uh, something I learned from the the people who happened to be white that's on our group that many of them were very very angry when they discovered the true history of America oh, that yes. they were not taught and and that anger was was so real that I was surprised. Um, and uh, some of them, you know, just felt like, you know, shouting and screaming. Some I've seen in tears, uh, that anger was so uh, strong because we were able, we meaning the African-Americans were able to tell them things that we've known for generations that they never, ever knew. I want to thank you so much. And I'll say good night. Thank you, friends. It was wonderful. And thanks to all of you for everything you've given me. Oh. Have a good holiday. Yes. Okay. Did you want me to go get you? Did you want to see? Uh, oh, those yes, ones? yes, yes. Okay, let me see if I can get him. Oh. Uh, hi, Kobe. Hi, Kobe. Oh, he's adorable. Yes, I'm, I'm a little furball.